Let's take a closer look at the Star Wars Black Series 6 inch figure of Crosshair from the Bad Batch. Villa Veracino, living the Star Wars life. Hello there, and thanks for visiting the Villa Veracino YouTube channel. Today I'm going to take a closer look at and unbox the Star Wars Black Series 6 inch figure of Crosshair from the animated series The Bad Batch. As you can see this is his Clone Force 99 armor as seen in season 1. I am a big fan of the Bad Batch animated series on Disney Plus and I'm on a mission to try and collect all of the Black Series figures from this show. Here in New Zealand some of them have not shown up at all, I'm having to sort of source them from a variety of different places so it's a little bit of a mission to try and collect them all but I'm up for the challenge. So now we have Crosshair. He has a really fascinating character. I really want to see where his storyline ends up because of course we are currently in the midst of season three airing on Disney Plus. So sadly that is the final season but I'm really really excited to see where all of the storylines end up. So let's take a closer look at the packaging of this season one version of Crosshair before I open it up which I'm very excited to do. So for the Bad Batch we have that sort of darker red kind of burgundy wine color here which of course is a perfect match because it is a color that generally accents their armor particularly in season one that original Clone Force 99 coloring there with the dark gray so I think overall that is a great choice for the box. We have that nice big window showing the figure inside. We've got lots of accessories here to take a closer look at once I pull them all out of that plastic. And we can see the name in that same dark color there, Crosshair, if I can just get the light to shine on that gloss. The um, coloring here is a little bit hard to read with that dark red against the black. You can see the uh, black text here of Star Wars The Bad Batch a little bit better but I don't think I would choose any other color for this particular packaging series. As with the modern Black Series line, we have this fabulous side panel art. So we can see we have Crosshair here with his blaster rifle and helmet on. And down the bottom, we just have that simple text that says Crosshair. A little bit hard to read there, but yes, it looks so nice when you have all of those boxes lined up on your shelf with all of that art kind of making that big jigsaw puzzle there. Very nice. On the back of the box we have that same side panel art here in a little bit of a close-up with the sort of lower panel cut off for all of that copyright text and we have a little bit of a bio text blurb here for Crosshair. The Bad Batch, technically known as Clone Force 99, is the result of Kaminoan experiments to create a specialist unit of clone commandos. Crosshair is the team sniper whose sharp vision gives him superior accuracy and as a result an air of superiority which I think is just the perfect description of Crosshair there. So pretty standard back and we have that little side window there, a little bit of a window up the top and copyright text down the bottom. So there we have it, pretty cool packaging, pretty standard but nonetheless going to be a good addition to my collection of boxes. I do like to display them with that cool art, I don't like throwing them away. So without further ado let's get him out of the plastic bubble so we can take a closer look at this cool figure and all his accessories. Okay so now I have Crosshair out of the box and we can take a look at the figure and all of his accessories. So we have his Clone Force 99 helmet, we have the backpack piece that we'll be able to peg onto his back, we have his long sniper rifle and we have a little Clone Trooper blaster pistol here as well. So I'll sort of put those all on the figure shortly, just going to take a closer look at the details and some of the articulation of this figure. So one thing when I was taking him out of his box was I noticed that this little sort of extra sticky outy bit for want of a better word on his shoulder pauldron here um, is very it's like a soft rubber um, so it was kind of a bit flicked back in the box not too badly but it's just a little bit curved so kind of hoping that that might straighten out a little bit with time from the front it doesn't look too bad um, but you kind of notice it from some angles so yes I know that there are some tricks to sort of straighten out a little bit of that sort of bent soft plastic but for now I, it's not too bad so I'm just going to leave it for now. 
Okay, so we've got sort of an interesting face sculpt. One of the things when you translate sort of animated shows into Black Series in particular is that they kind of uh, create a bit more of a lifelike appearance. So the, the facial expressions of some of the characters feel different. So this doesn't feel like an exact likeness of Crosshair from the show. This is kind of a somewhere in between, you know, because Clone Force 99 don't look like the sort of regs, or the standard clones, so they don't look like Boba Fett, Jango Fett, you know, actor Timuera Morrison. We've got a little bit of something in between here. So I kind of get that, you know, it's a Crosshair figure. But it doesn't look exactly like he does in the animated show. You kind of lose a little bit of something when it's not an animated style face. But if you want to put all your black series together, I understand why they are going for a more uniform approach to the black series line. We kind of get the same thing with like the hot toys. You know, they're not the animated faces. They try and make them look like, you know, real human faces, which sometimes you lose a little bit of that direct likeness. But overall, I think I do, you know, see that cross here sort of sculpt coming through there and he's got that cool sort of face paint there on his right eye very cool of course this is season one so he does look a little bit different in later seasons so this is what i am comparing him for moving on down we've got some really cool details on his armor i have to say clone force 99 has some very detailed armor and we've got quite a lot of little battle worn components here Hope the camera can pick up some of these sort of scratches and weatherings in that plastic sculpt and of course we have some very fine detail we have that bad batch sort of logo there with that white skull and the sort of little 99 printed underneath and again we have a very small 99 on the other shoulder so those are quite painted really well um, and the 99 is actually raised. It's sculpted in there. So I can feel that. It's actually a raised piece of plastic that is then painted. So that's a really nice detail there. This skull is a flat print. But we can see some really interesting texture here on some of these additional armor components. This isn't like a smooth plastic. It's pebbled. So it kind of gives it like a leather-like sort of texture to the finish there. We've got a really fun mix of greys and that sort of dark red here. We've got some silver detailing. We've got the sort of the black undersuit like the clone troopers wear. We've got a brownish leather belt that goes up to the sort of pauldron ammo belt thing here. We've got a holster for his blaster pistol. And we can see that that strap goes all the way down his back. So I don't see a join in this belt. So it isn't removable um, and it feels like, yeah, that's glued on to his chest. So this part is not going to move because I think I see, I don't know if I quite see glue, but that is, it's so completely flat against his chest. It must be glued down there or at least a very solid peg that I don't really want to move. And same with, it's like just a little bit of a gap behind this so i feel like that's where it's glued on so that bit's not going to move interesting that the strap down the back still has a little bit of give to it so i'd be a little bit careful with this because you certainly don't want to break that some of that soft plastic you can kind of tear or snap if you're a little bit rough with it and the holster's got a little bit of movement here because that is that sort of softer plastic there so some really cool sculpted details. We've even got weathering coming all the way down here. I like, I just like, it just gives a little bit more depth to it. It looks a little less like, um, I don't want to say kid's toy, but I do appreciate that sort of smaller detail. If you've ever seen those sort of Hasbro uh, value figures, you know, uh, locally they were like $10 and they were in small cardboard boxes. There was something about sort of the finish of armor that just looked like a kid's toy. And then when you sort of see the Black Series figures and you see all this tiny detail and sculpting, it makes it feel a little bit more like, uh, I know it is a toy, but it's more designed for collectors, certainly the price range of Black Series. So I'm really enjoying the details here. We can even see some of that uh, battle damage sort of in the sculpt on the back of the arms and on the shoulder pauldron. It's really fun if I can get that light to really pick that up. I really like the battle damage because, you know, these are clones that have you know 
fought some tough battles. I like seeing those extra details on these figures. A little bit down here on the back of those um, calf armor pieces here. Darker plastics, a little bit harder to see, but I do like that there, that sort of really sort of carved in details. Very cool. Okay, let's check out some of his articulation. I'm expecting fairly standard stuff. It'll be interesting to see how much perhaps movement through, because this looks like perhaps this is a join, but this is going to perhaps make me not so keen to uh, twist him through the middle there because of that fixed point. So we've got some pretty easy movement with his head. Um, it's a little bit hard to get in to see if I can actually move that neck piece. You can see we've got that sort of sculpted ribbed clone trooper neck piece there, painted black. So yes, we can get some pretty good you know, expressions by tilting his head there. So the pauldrons, uh, sorry, the shoulder bits here are that sort of softer plastic it's, uh, that's kind of attached with a little bit of a strip under the shoulder component here. So they do flex up, um, but again, going to be a little bit gentle with those because you can kind of snap that softer plastic. But let's see. Oh, he's got very stiff joints, actually. Okay, let's see. Yeah, okay, so we can get his arms all the way out without too much trouble. That didn't feel like I was being too rough there. Very stiff joints. I don't know if you can hear that. You can kind of see some of the sculpting of those components under the under the shoulder piece there. And we've got bicep armor. We've got... I bet you all of his joints are going to be really stiff. Okay, so I've got his elbows there. And put his arm back down again. Oh, very stiff. Okay, here we go. Oh, very easy to move it that way, actually. That's interesting. And same again on that one. But clicking those out was a bit of a job. Oh, there we go. That kind of clicked in there. And then we've got a little bit of side to side, but mostly just rotations for his hands there on the other side so we can see we've got those two different hand grips this one is just sort of a classic like gripping lightsabers or round objects and this one has not as much of a trigger finger you can see that that finger is a little bit separate but it's not as pointed as I've noticed on some figures it still creates quite a just a classic grip stance there but I'll have to see how well he's going to hold his big sniper rifle and blaster pistol accessories. So let's test out. Okay, so yes, he does move through that sort of underneath that chest plate there. But because this is fixed, I I really hesitate to move that much. There's a little bit of a click in there. But because this is fixed, any kind of sideways movement, I don't. This will move. The belt will move a little bit, so if you really do want to pose him to the side, I would, you know, perhaps adjust that a little bit, so when you move that, it's not taking it away from that connection point too far. But I don't think I'm really going to be fussing with that uh, too much. So he doesn't have any kind of um, armor that's really going to impact on his legs too much. We've got the top of that thigh armor that's going to stop about there. Um, and we can get all the way up pretty easily. So that hinges there. We've got a little bit of contact there at that very sort of top point there, but pretty nice there. No sort of, um, is it under? Oh, it's underneath. Okay. I was looking for like that seam line, but it's underneath the armor. So I can actually uh, sort of rotate his leg to face more sort of an outward pose that's kind of fun they've hidden it underneath the armor there straighten that back up now and we've got that classic clone trooper knee plate very well hiding the joins here so it's nice and tidy from the front very tidy from the back too we don't really see that much so that is the knee join not too stiff it does hold that position nicely and oh very stiff okay a little bit of movement but very stiff through his 
oh angles wow yes that is very a little bit clicky but yeah okay so i'm hoping he'll hold poses well sometimes if they've got really nice tight ankles once you get them on the desk they're rock solid so let's hope we can get just some yeah he feels pretty sturdy to sit down uh to stand in a pose there a little bit of rock but i'm sure we'll get some finer adjustments it's looking pretty cool so all in all pretty happy we so you can see we've got that peg hole there in the back for his backpack that i'm going to have a look at very shortly he's going to take a look at his accessories so his specialist sniper rifle is it's got a very fine maybe like a speckling to it i don't think it's just a straight flat black it's probably not really going to show up on camera because it, it's a black plastic but there's like a little bit of sort of like a little metallic flick in it just to give it a bit of something so it kind of looks like um, a gun metal perhaps more than just a plastic toy blaster rifle it's very very subtle at my eyes it's sort of this distance it just looks flat black and we can see we've got a very small peg on the side here that i'm gonna test because it there is a hole on the side of the backpack so i'm hoping that that will fit and give us some fun display options but yes and we'll test how well he holds this one as well because it's quite it's quite big and then we've got that classic little black it also has that same little speckling as well so it's made from the same plastic pretty classic little blaster pistol so i'm just going to see how well he's going to hold this one i feel like that's going to go in there fairly easily okay if i just get his and click there yep very nice i know that's black on black but his finger does fit in there it wasn't a tight fit that was pretty nice he does hold it well but it wasn't like sometimes when i'm putting accessories into hands i'm really worried i'm going to bend a finger and potentially ruin something but that just kind of just gently pushed in there and he holds that nice and securely so i like that don't really see him use that one too much so i'm going to take that one out of his hand for posing and i'm just going to pop it in his little brown holster here bit of a snug fit but nice and secure and that looks good nice and tidy okay so let's see if we can start assembling him okay so we've got this backpack they all have sort of unique pieces to their armor you know they are all specialists so it's kind of loosely based on the republic commando backpack but we've got this long slot and we've got a hole here as well peg for uh, attaching it and then we've got some just weathering marks on this side and just that one little i think that's the only paint app here it's just this one little red stripe there across the back so before i go and put it on his back i'm just going to go and sort of test out some of the posing options and once i start trying to put these things together when it's on his back it inevitably comes off so where was that little peg on this okay so that sort of pushes into there quite nicely so i guess if you sort of want to hang that off his backpack or perhaps you could clip it on like that because i don't think this is how he carries um, his sniper rifle in the show i think this is more a play feature so i'm going to try and put it in the slot the way that i think he has it in the show if i recall correctly now i think it like compacts it down i don't think it sticks out quite this high in the show but I do believe it has the um, sort of the stock down the bottom and this part up here the um, sort of the range the scope here kind of sits quite nicely on the top of that so it kind of holds that in place it fits in there quite nicely it wasn't too hard to slot it in there so let's go and see how well this looks when I put the peg on his back so we get a little bit of this kind of thing sorry the top of that rifle is so long and sticking out of the camera frame 
Um, and oh well, he actually balances pretty well with that accessory and backpack on his back. I was wondering whether he was going to start tipping over. He's quite well balanced. That wasn't too hard to put on there. And that's pretty sturdily posed there. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to take that off. Now, let's see how hard it is to get him to hold this. So this is a little bit trickier because I've got this long stock. I can see if I can get his thumb to go in there. Okay. Ooh, is he going to hold up? Oh, he is. Wow, okay. Not too hard to put it in there. This long stock kind of hits on his arm a little bit, but it gives it a little bit of stability. There. Wow, he's quite a well-balanced figure. Now I'm really glad that he's got those sort of uh, secure ankles there because he's actually um, got perhaps one of the slightly harder to pose with accessories because it is so long it's going to throw him off balance there a little bit. I'm quite impressed with that. See if we get some sort of cool poses there. Get that fully in shot. He's stand I'm really impressed with how well he's handling having such a long accessory there. It's definitely one of the bigger weapons I've had for a Black Series figure. And I'm quite I'm really quite impressed with how well I can pose him. I'm barely having to adjust his positioning, whether it's on his back or in his hands. I'm really liking that. So I guess the last thing to test is the helmets. I tend to be a little bit anxious about these because he has a sculpted hair and a painted face. I'm always worried that I'm going to get this stuck on them and I don't like taking helmets on and off because I really don't want to sort of scratch or otherwise damage the paint job on the face. But Clone Force 99 do wear their helmets a lot. So of course collectors are going to want to have the option of having them either, you know, posed with their helmets on altogether or helmets off. So I'm just going to take a look at the features of this helmet before I go and put it on him. We have sort of like a rangefinder little part here and that moves. So it's a little bit flexible because that's a very fine little stalk there. But I like that I can move that. Got some cool posing there. There isn't anything painted on the underside. It's a little bit hard to show. It is just flat gray with a little bit of a dark section painted on the side there. And we've got some weathering on the helmet, that kind of pitting and scratching that is in the sculpt there. And we've got this dark gray rim. We can see that the helmet is basically made from that dark gray. So it is the light gray that is the painted element with a black visor, some little black details here towards the sort of grill on the front, which is also accented with some small black elements. There's some really fine detail in there. And then we've got that red stripe running along the top there. So very classic crosshair look. I think they did that helmet well. The other thing I noticed is that it's, this is a squishy plastic, which does help. You can kind of squeeze it a little bit to try and get it over some of the figure's features. It, and I'm hoping that this soft rubber will not um, damage the paintwork on the figures quite as badly. I tend not to take it on and off, but you know, nice to know. Okay, let's see how hard this is to get this on him. Okay. Okay, it's a little bit of a tight fit. Let's see. I push. Okay, I think, I think that's mostly on. Got a little bit of his chin visible, but when I push down, it kind of wants to I'll have to do a little bit of finessing because you can kind of still see his chin there. But it, with those movable heads, he's got a particularly well moving head. When I sort of push down on it, his head just wants to move forward. So I'm going to have to finesse that a little bit. But I think overall, certainly when I've got them all dressed up like that, you can't see it. I think that looks pretty cool. We've got that black. You can just kind of see it there a little bit. If I tip him down, you can't see it. Going to have to sort of uh, try and finesse that on a little bit tighter, but I think overall 
that's pretty good I can pose him with his classic specialist sniper rifle there that looks really cool now I gotta get them all lined up on my display because he looks really cool that is such a massive blaster there of course it's kind of a little bit hard like to try and pose these figures so that they're like looking through the scope with their arms up and everything like that I don't know how well I might be able to get him there isn't I don't his hand looks like a too tight of a grip to get it around the underside of this so I think I'm just gonna leave his hand down there and just kind of do some do some cool poses up like this <laughs> But yeah, I am glad that it goes onto his backpack nice. And it doesn't actually really throw his balance off. That's really cool. I was a little bit worried when I was like, okay, he's got a backpack and a huge weapon. This is going to be a hard one to get to stand up right. But yeah, certainly come across some other figures that they barely have any accessories and I'm still struggling to get them to stand up nice and cleanly. He's a fabulous figure. I like those small Clone Force 99 details. I like all that little weathering there. You know, the face is a little bit so-so. I, I get that it's crosshair, but it's I still, because there's that lost in translation a little bit from the original animated style to a slightly more sort of realistic face sculpt for these figures. But you go and put the helmets on and that problem goes away. So if that helmet, if the face bothers you, the helmet is a great option there and I think they're going to look so cool when I get them all together in the gear and helmets on for my display. He looks really cool. I'm loving the Bad Batch show. I'm sad that it's going to be over soon but I am celebrating the show by going through and finally unboxing some of my Bad Batch Black series. I've been trying to collect up a bunch and then open them all together so I can sort of have a lot of Bad Batch fun. And I think he is fantastic. I'm really happy with this one. Thank you so much for watching my Black Series Crosshair Season 1 6 inch figure unboxing. I had a lot of fun. He's got some cool accessories, some fun detail, and he poses really well. There you have it. Do check out my other videos for more Star Wars unboxing and collectible fun. Catch you in the next video. And as always, may the Force be with you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, check out our other videos, and subscribe for alerts about new uploads. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.